video and we are now going to hear from uh, Alice Slater will provide testimony. She serves on the boards of World Beyond War and Global Network Against Weapons and Nuclear Power in Space. She is the UN NGO representative for the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation and works with Code Pink for a world at peace. Welcome. Thank Alice. you. I'm delighted to be here and I'm so overwhelmed by all this information. And I'm just thinking, what, how are we gonna use this? And if only everybody in America knows what we're listening to now, I think we could shift the whole conversation because what we're getting now is they're, they're heating it up. I mean, Biden is calling Putin a, uh, a criminal. He's agreeing he's criminal. And uh, we, we had this terrible meeting with China. And I grew up in the 50s when we had the Red Scare and we had a, a, a comic strip by Walt Kelly called Pogo. And his most famous line was, we've met the enemy and he is us. And I was so terrified of communism. I mean, I remember being at Queens College in the 1950s and having the discussion and somebody gave me a pamphlet that said Communist Party of America. My heart was pounding with terror. I put it in my book bag. I went home in the Bronx up to the eighth floor to the incinerator, threw it directly down the incinerator without even looking. That's how scared we were. And years later, I did go to the Soviet Union when Gorbachev had instituted perestroika and glasnost. I was part of a legal delegation, the Lawyers Alliance for Nuclear Arms Control. And we were going there. Actually, the Soviets had stopped nuclear testing ahead of us and Congress said, uh, we went to Congress, our lawyers group. They said, oh, forget it, you can't trust the Russians. So we raised the head of our New York City Bar Association, Bill DeWind, he was part of the Dutch DeWinds up the Hudson, raised a lot of money, hired a team of seismologists. We went to the Soviet Union, we said, will you let us put our seismologists at your test site so we can see if you really stopped? And they said, yes. And we were able to go back to Congress and stop nuclear testing. So, I mean, it is possible to get progress. And I looked at this, like I was shocked when I looked at the history that Woodrow Wilson sent troops as we heard. And then after we dropped the bomb and we got together with the Soviet Union to form the United Nations to end the scourge of war, that was our mission. And the number one resolution was the nuclear disarmament. Stalin said to Truman, turn the bomb over to the UN. And Truman said, no, so Russia got the bomb. Then when the war came down and Gorbachev let go of all of Eastern Europe without a shot, I mean, it was like a miracle. Uh, he and Reagan met in Reykjavik and they said, let's get rid of all the nuclear weapons. We now have 14,000 nuclear weapons on the planet and 13,000 are in the US and Russia. So this is not just some abstraction and 2,500 in each country pointed on missiles ready to go off. The, the other uh, seven countries have only a thousand between them. And China's smart enough to keep the bombs off the missiles. They don't point them at anybody. So China has a little Eastern wisdom there. Anyway, Gorbachev said to Reagan, let's get rid of all the nuclear weapons. Reagan said, great idea. So Gorbachev said, don't do Star Wars because the US has a military policy to dominate and control the military use of space. It's in their documents. That's what we stand for. And Reagan said, I can't give up Star Wars. So Gorbachev pulled it off the table. Then uh, he was very nervous, Gorbachev, about Germany becoming reunited because as we've heard, they lost 27 million Russians to the Nazi onslaught. I never heard that figure. As a matter of fact, when I went there in the 80s, every guy over 60 was wearing his World War II medals. You go to the Leningrad Cemetery at that time, now it's St. Petersburg, there were like 400,000 mass graves from the Nazi siege of Leningrad. And uh, every street corner had a monument to the dead. 
And my guide said to me, we had guides, he said, why don't you Americans trust us? And I was being very arrogant American. Why don't we trust you? I said, what about Hungary? What about Czechoslovakia? He looked at me with tears in his eyes. He said, we had to protect our border from Germany. And I looked at him and that was their truth. And we were getting such baloney, the American people, and they're still getting it. You know, we, they were never coming after us. I mean, their occupation might not have been the finest occupation of Eastern Europe, but they weren't gonna let anybody come into Russia. I mean, Napoleon had marched in a hundred years earlier into Moscow. So anyway, it was, uh, then so Gorbachev said uh, he was very nervous about East Germany being united with West Germany and going into NATO. And Reagan said, don't worry. And Jack Matlock, his ambassador, has written an op-ed in the New York Times about this. We give you our word, we will not expand NATO one inch to the east. And they put it right up to Russia's border. They were even talking about taking Ukraine in and Georgia. And we're doing war games on Russia's border, nuclear war games. We keep U.S. nukes in five NATO states, Italy, Belgium, Holland, Germany, and Turkey. I mean, it's, you know what happened when they had them in Cuba, we went bananas. And that's very interesting to me, the Cuban missile crisis, because we, Kennedy made a deal with Khrushchev to get them out and secretly promised to remove U.S. missiles from Turkey a year later because he couldn't make it a public deal because the Congress never would have agreed to it. And he kept his word, he removed them. But we had put them in there. That was part of the incentive for Khrushchev to put missiles into Cuba. And guess what? We now have missiles back in Turkey, right on Russia's border with nuclear weapons base there. So Pogo was right. Then after uh, we went west, Clinton bombed Kosovo that's the first time we broke our agreement with the United Nations that we would never engage in a war of aggression unless we were under imminent threat of attack without the approval of the Security Council. And Russia vetoed that war and we went in and said the hell with you. Then Putin offered Clinton to cut our massive arsenals at that time with 16,000 down to a thousand each and call everybody to the table, but don't put missiles into Romania because we were starting to build these missile emplacements. Clinton would not promise this. And then Bush walked out of the 1972 anti-ballistic missile treaty that we had with the Soviets, which helped us to stop building more missiles because we didn't have anti-missiles. And uh, we put missiles in Romania and Trump put them in Poland and uh, this is, it's, it's always us. Then they, uh, Bush and Obama blocked any discussion in 2008 and 2014 on a Russian and Chinese proposals for a space weapons ban. In the Committee on Disarming Geneva, you need consensus from everybody to discuss it. The US vetoed it. And every year there's a resolution in the uh, General Assembly prevention of an arms race in outer space, Russia and uh, China propose it and support it, and the US says no. We, and now we formed a separate space force, masters in space, you know. Then this was very interesting because we're hearing all this talk about cyber attacks. After the Stuxnet virus, where the US and Israel boasted about how they, um, you know, hit, uranium enrichment facilities in Iran, Putin proposed to Obama that the US and Russia negotiate a cyber ban treaty. Doesn't that sound good? No, we, we turned it down and there's a story in the Times. And then, I mean, they were having this 75th anniversary of World War II in, in, in Europe and they did not invite Russia and uh, Putin gave this speech saying that neglecting the lessons of history inevitably leads to a harsh payback. We will firmly uphold the truth based on documented historical facts. We will continue to be honest and impartial about the events of World War II. This includes a large scale project to establish Russia's largest collection of archival records, film, photo materials, 
about the history of World War II and the pre-war period. And I think we have a good partner over there in Putin. If we want to do a truth report, we should make it like we should get more Russians involved with us. It shouldn't just be Americans. It should because they want to do it, you know. And even the new arms race, Putin gave a speech in, uh, I think it was 2018 or 17, how they begged us not to walk out of that anti-ballistic missile treaty. And then they tried so hard to negotiate. And finally, they decided they had to improve their weapons. And then we use that as an excuse for why we're spending more money in an arms race. And of course, we've heard all these economic drivers. And it's insane because we have so much to do for the climate. I mean, look at Texas. They need a whole new grid. We're looking for jobs and, and manufacturers. I mean. They let a, a, a snowstorm kill all the electric in Texas. You know, we need windmills, we need solar power, we, we need to change our farming over. There's so much work that we could be doing for this incredible money that we're spending on the military. So right now we got a treaty negotiated with 122 countries that just got disgusted with the nuclear weapon states that weren't following their promises in the non-proliferation treaty for good faith efforts and nuclear disarmament. So they, but there's no treaty that actually said nuclear weapons are illegal. So we negotiated that. It passed. We won the Nobel Peace Prize for this international campaign to abolish nuclear weapons. None of the nuclear weapon states were there. Interestingly, North Korea voted for the negotiations in the UN, they were the only nuclear weapon state that did like uh, the Western states, US, Russia, England, France, and Israel voted no. India, China, and Pakistan abstained. And North Korea voted yes. This was like the first vote whether negotiations should go forward. And then they went forward and we got a treaty and it just became, entered into force because there more than 50 countries. And so that's something that we should be promoting here. And uh, I mean, we have to get Obama to, to, we really have to get him to change his tune. We got him to change his tune on the big economic uh, uh, bill they just passed. You know, that wasn't his love from the old neoliberal, which got us Trump in the first place. So uh, there's like a new talk somehow of, uh, that's, we're not there yet, but. We have to mobilize here and uh, am I up? Is my time up? I wasn't. Um, pretty much, Alice. Yeah, then I'll, I'll finish there and just urge you to, I'm working with World Beyond War. I mean, it's no good to just stop this war or that weapon. We have to get rid of the whole war system. And now with the plague and the climate catastrophe and the nuclear weapons pointed, ready to destroy. You know, we have to shift out of war. So I recommend everybody to do the World Beyond War and the ICANN campaign where you can work to get the US. They should definitely stop any kind of manufacturer and all the arms controllers that destroy the message or so they're now talking about no first use, which is ridiculous because we're using them already just by having them. Dan Ellsberg always says that. It's like a, if a bank robber walks into a bank with a gun you don't have to shoot it, you're already using it and we're using them. So that's how they came up after this whole new treaty to ban the bomb. We now have all the foundations in America that are part of the military, and the, the Mickey Mac that McGovern calls it, you know, military industrial academic congressional think tank complex is now pushing no first use, which doesn't mean anything. So ban the bomb and, you know, let's, let's get the message out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. And I think you have a, you've mentioned a project, a uh, U.S. Russia collaboration on a truth commission. So yes, <laughs> a good well, project. This is the opening shot. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Thank you, Alice.